So we're going to begin off the afternoon with the final team talk session. Uh, this is really uh, an important part of some of our projects here that, that uh, we don't just generate data, but we try to put this data into a native coordinate framework so that it puts it in this natural anatomical location, it puts it into a framework for doing statistical analysis, and for the case of the mouse projects, uh, this has used a reference atlas uh, that's being very much embellished for these later stages. So a challenge for the future here is how do we register these data that are being generated for all these different data modalities onto the same sort of common coordinate framework? And in particular, this group will address how uh, we can register neurons from physiological recordings from brain slices uh, into this common coordinate framework. Uh, in particular, designing and implementing a block-based imaging platform to aid in the registration of neurons within mouse brain slices. Uh, the four members of the team, if you could please join us, are Shana Perry, Elliot Mount, Aaron Oldre, and Yang Li. Thank you, Ed. Hi, I'm Shana. I'm the manager of the tissue processing department here at the Allen Institute for Brain Science. And as Ed uh, introduced, we're going to be talking about the design and implementation of a block face imaging platform. Um, I'll be talking about what we set out to accomplish with this, uh, some of the requirements for this project, and why it was important in the first place. Elliot will continue with the design and build of the hardware and the custom software that we use. Aaron will talk about the, uh, how the electrophysiology core uses the data, and then Young will continue with some of the work that the informatics team is doing with what we produce. So why is block face imaging important, and what is it? Um, much of the work that we've done here for the past 10 years has uh, uh, used fresh, frozen, or fixed tissue that has been section sectioned on a cryostat, put onto a slide, and then processed. Um, this is all on slides, and you can save slides or save these images in, you know, on our website for further reference. Um, and although this is going to continue to be a big part of uh, what's important in the future, we're also moving on to um, using fresh tissue, as many of the previous talks have discussed. Um, here we have one of our newer, uh, even though it looks maybe a little bit old, um, uh, technologies, the compressed home. I slice tissue through here, collect tissue in this water bath, and then these slices are passed off for either electrophysiological, electrophysiological recordings or dissociated into single cells for further analysis. Um, fresh tissue presents a specific and unique problem because it deteriorates over time or if dissociated into single cells, it doesn't exist at all. So there's, uh, it's very difficult to tell where you were in the brain or what exact region you were working from. So having a block based imaging system will allow us to take a snapshot of the tissue before it is sliced and uh, allow uh, our technology informatics team to uh, register that data for further analysis. Uh, so this project had multiple customers. Um, the tissue processing team, my team, uh, wanted to use uh, the, the images for quality control for our tissues. Um, as I think you guys have heard, we're going to be doing a lot of work with these brains. Um, so we wanted to make sure that there was consistency and high quality amongst every tissue, every slice that we provided. The electrophysiology team needed a full face image so that they could figure out where their region of interest was and what target cells they were going to in their electrodes for recording. And the technology team needed something that was going to be compatible with our uh, in laboratory information management system, our LIM system that we use here at the Allen Institute. And they also needed something that was of high enough uh, quality that they could use to register to the common coordinate framework. Uh, in addition to those requirements, tissue processing team had unique requirements as well. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing a lot of these, and we're going to have more than one system, so we had to make sure that it was reproducible. We want to make sure that there's consistency among the images between every different uh, system that we have set up, because we're going to be having multiple of them and multiple uh, uh, people operating them as well. Um, there also had to be minimal impact to workflow. Um, the time, or healthy tissue is vital to having good electrophysiological recordings and having healthy tissue, healthy cells for uh, RNA sequencing. Um, so it had to be quick and easy to use. It had to be integrated with LIMS. LIMS is our communication tool between the tissue processing team and the electrophysiology team. Um, so it had to be a quick upload without having a separate data, uh, data integration step. It had to be safe from damage. Uh, we didn't want it to be uh, 
uh, damaged all the time or having to change out um, pieces over and over again. And I had to have a small footprint. As we all know, we're working in pretty tight quarters these days, so uh, since we're gonna have so many of these in a small space, uh, we had to make sure that we had, uh, it was a pretty compact unit. So taking those requirements, the engineering team um, came up with this design. This is uh, based upon uh, an initial uh, block based imaging system that we used during the human atlas project, human brain atlas project, and the non-human primate atlas. Um, it had a, a Canon camera. Uh, it used an actually custom designed buffer chamber here that's a little bit smaller, uh, and it acquired images in color. And we we're happy with this because it actually proved that we could, oh, and the images were uh, integrated into LIM. So we were pretty happy with this. Because um, like I said, you know, could, the images were in a format that we could use. Um, it had a you know, good proof of concept and the parts were all readily available and so that we could uh, make multiple of them. Um, there were a few problems with this though. The smaller buffer chamber made it really difficult to carefully pick up the slices and keep them in a high quality. Um, and the image is, was a little bit small for actual reg registration use. So using this information, this feedback, um, the engineering team came up with what we're using as our current design. Um, kind of one of the biggest changes was it was determined that we didn't need to use a color image, we could use a black and white camera. So there's a different camera here. Um, the only change that we had to make was that we uh, darkened our agarose to provide contrast between the tissue and the embedding material. Um, and it took up a, a slightly different and smaller footprint, so it was a little bit easier to use. Um, so this is our current design, and Elliot will go over the design of, the, of this hardware and the software that we use to actually acquire the images. Hi. So uh, this is an overview of the uh, schematic for the block face imaging system. And as you can see, really this boils down to three machine parts. Um, it's incredibly simple to put together, and uh, the modification to the compressed home system is a total of four screw holes that are added to it. Um, the user actually doesn't need to interact with any of this hardware whatsoever. Uh, the camera is completely computer controlled, and it's just connected via an ethernet cable. Um, the focus doesn't have to change at all, so there is really a very simple interface for this. Um, so this is a starting image for what we had, um, and as you can see, it starts off with uh, hot spots in the field of view, and there's not enough of uh, the tissue in the field of view uh, to get many details out of this. Uh, so with the change of optics that we currently have, uh, we get a much better field of view uh, of tissue, and uh, it acts as a good registration source with the uh, agarose block around the outside. As far as the software is concerned, this was also another emphasis uh, to make as simple as possible. Um, the user can take an image uh, with a single button press, and that opens up uh, this sub window right here, uh, and that will show you uh, an album of each one of the images that you've taken to ensure that no duplicates or, ex or any other extras happen. Um, after that, the images can either be saved locally to the machine or they can actually be uploaded to LIMS. Uh, this image down here is actually the LIMS interface um, where you get to see all of the images that have been uploaded to LIMS and this also shows the uh, annotation style of this. So you can actually draw on this image as to where you want to record from. So the user, in order to make this even simpler, um, there's a lot of different numbers that get associated with each in individual animal. Uh, and so to make this as easy as possible, most people actually interact with this six-digit six number, which is the lab tracks ID. And so the user can actually just input that number in here, and it will come up with a list of specimens. We can actually get that to retrieve any information about the animal that we wish, but for this particular setup, uh, it's just the specimens that each one of these was going to be associated with. After that, hit the checkbox and it automatically uploads it to LIMS and creates all of the data sets necessary. This is uh, when you actually go into LIMS and you start looking up animals that have this block face imaging process associated with them. Uh, this is the interface that you're greeted with. And so you get a little thumbnail image of one of the images in that data set and you get all, a lot of the other information associated with that particular animal. And from here, uh, Aaron is going to talk about using the system with EFIS. 
So I'm Aaron with the EVIS Core, and, uh, which was introduced yesterday by Jim in his team talk and Kristen and Dijon in their poster. Um, but we are the primary consumers of block-based imaging. Uh, it's crucial to our workflow where we're getting that fresh tissue from Shana um, and her team, and it's coming through, and we're going to target our region, uh, currently our project being targeting visual cortex, um, going in looking for a fluorescent neuron, and then using uh, glass pipettes to then record the uh, physiology, electrophysiology of that cell, staining it, or filling it with a stain to have passed off or staining and imaging from there. Um, so, uh, without block face imaging, this is how tissue would show up in our room. Um, and then you just have a carousel of slides that are very non-discreet. You don't know what's going on with them. You don't know orientation, where they are within the brain. Um, there's no markers on there. We don't even know if which mouse they're really coming from. Um, you know, when in Jim's days, uh, when he was doing this by himself, this was fine for you to work with your own slices and go on, um, you know, doing this. But as we have multiple teams with multiple people on them, this starts to become confusing. Um, so this is why we need block-based imaging for us. Um, as soon as the tissue is sliced, those images are uploaded to limbs, and this is what we see. We're going to have one user take a look at these while the tissue is incubating before it even arrives in our room and identify which slices uh, contain our region of interest here being, again, V1. Um, so we can have that and open up this drawing tool that Elliot showed in limbs, and we have all of our images there. And with the drawing tool, go in and create layers by looking at our reference atlas, just, uh, draw a polygon over our, our region of interest. This is our recording target that will be passed on to a user um, at their scope so they know what to be looking for. Um, so now this is a much different image here. We have our carousel, but with limbs and block face imaging, it's telling us what each well is, that we have this slice in here with you know, this block face image and its recording target. This can go out to a rig and be recorded from. So this cell, this slice would sit on the rig. Uh, the user can bring up our block face imaging and find out where their recording target is, focus their electrode on there, and look into their field of view to find cells that are going to work for them, record off of that cell. Um, but now the big question is, where is that neuron located in the entire cell, or within the entire slice, sorry. Um, and so that's the next part of it. We go back, we've got, we can zoom out and take a 4x image, and now we have some markers on here that are going to tell us, um, you know, can act as a fiducial mark based on our block face image. And we can use that to then mark where we recorded from, and so that this all can be packaged up and handed off to technology in one um, nice little gift wrap for them. So Young will talk about that. Thank you, Ryan. So after many, many people's uh, hard work, now uh, this beautiful image uh, reached our hand, informatics. The first job we do here is to register it back to the common coordinate framework. So what is common coordinate framework? The short answer is, it's a population average from 1,675 mouse brain, and taking that as a standard space, and now we're mapping the different subjects from different modalities into it, and where all this uh, uh, data set can be uh, quantitatively analyzed and compared. So back to the blo uh, block face image. So for this platform, mapping it to the CCF, will bring the e-face and the morphological data into the CCF. But uh, in order to do this, we are facing two uh, uh, major issues. The first is due to the limitation of the time and the cost. So for each brain, we only have about, sorry about that. So for each brain, we only have about 12 slices. And uh, secondly, uh, because the CCF template is based on another uh, modality, tissue set. So even for the common features, such as uh, fiber tracks, they have a different uh, intensity profile. So what we are doing here is actually we are doing a partial brain intermodality registration. Uh, that is difficult. So in order to solve this problem, we introduce the reference brain. So the reference brain is a special order of four brain. For this four brain, 
we don't do any um, if it's recording. We just do the sectioning. So this time we have enough time to have about a, uh, a 50 to 60 uh, slices for one brain. So that almost covers the, the whole brain. And uh, from this four brain, we select one with the best contrast and the least distortion and register it to the CCF. And once this is done, when you have a new brain, you just need to register this new brain to this reference brain. So it's like you let it go, uh, go through this bridge. So in this way, it has a better chance to reach the CCF. So we first test this idea on these 29 brains. Um, here, at the end, in a row, it's a chrono section from the CCF template. And at the same location, we take one such chrono section from each of the registered brain as well. So if the registra uh, registration is good, uh, we should see very similar image like this. So as we can see from this 29 brain, we have about, uh, we have uh, 24 of them registered. And uh, we filled on five. Uh, this is uh, not bad, but we believe every mouse deserves a meaningful life. <laughs> so we did something to improve. So what we did here is uh, we upgrade our bridge. We upgrade the bridge from the single brain to the average brain of the 24 brain we just aligned. Why we do this? First, uh, this brain is much, much more uh, symmetric, and it is more similar to the CCF template, and, uh, which is also an uh, average brain. And uh, secondly, and also more importantly, um, as you can see, this brain is much, much smoother. So you get a much, much smoother cost function. So when you do the optimization on that function, you have much, much uh, less opportunity to be trapped to, uh, into uh, any local minimum like this. So finally, we test this, uh, this whole pipeline on 50 brains. Actually, this is all the brain we have now for the, for the pilot, uh, pilot study. And this time, we aligned all of them. So still this time, this is the CCF template. So you can compare each of them to this one. Yeah, let's say that again. Yeah, I, I really like to see this uh, little brain sitting together like this in such an organized way. Yeah, uh, in summary, uh, here we design and uh, implement a block, a block face imaging platform. It has a minimal impact workflow. It's, it is has reboot and uh, highly reproducible. And it is integrated with the lens. And at the end of the pipeline, it can automatically map it to uh, map the data back to the CCF. And uh, for this project, we have uh, support and help from uh, many people. We thank all of you. <laughs> uh, now we're taking questions. <laughs>